Guys, welcome back to Lab Cyber. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Today's video is going to be episode four of the cyber attack series where I describe the various types of cyber attacks. And today, specifically, I'm going to be talking to you about supply chain attacks. What exactly are supply chain attacks? How do they occur? And most importantly, how can they be prevented? So, let's start with the very first question What exactly are supply chain attacks? A supply chain attack is basically the kind of attack where a company is attacked not directly by the cyber criminals but by the criminals going through a third party company that has some sort of network access to the actual target company think of it this way right let's assume you have company a company a is the target the problem here though is that company a is very well defended they've got great anti-malware running on their systems they've got a great firewall great security policy in place basically you cannot attack them directly so what do the hackers do let's assume there is a company b that provides some sort of service to company A. Maybe they provide customer support, maybe they provide some sort of software update. The most important thing here is that company B has some sort of network access to company's A network. What the hackers will then do is they will see if they can attack company B successfully and if they can, they can then take advantage of the network connection between company B and company A to attack company A. That's basically what a supply chain attack is going through a third party to attack the actual intended target. Now, you got to understand there are about two variants of a supply chain attack. The very first variant is where you have hackers attacking one company so that they can then attack many other companies. Basically, this one company has some sort of network connection to so many other companies. The best example here would be the SolarWinds attack that occurred just a couple of years ago. In case you've forgotten, SolarWinds is this huge company. They have a very, very popular network management tool called Orion that's used by thousands and thousands of clients. What the hackers did was they were able to somehow install malware on the Orion software so when SolarWinds then pushed the update for the Orion software to their thousands of clients, that update had the malware already installed in it. And of course, the clients, they saw, oh, it's an update for, for Orion. They went ahead to install the update. They had no reason to suspect that this particular update had the malware already installed in it. So by attacking SolarWinds, the hackers were then able to attack thousands of other companies. The second variant is the classic supply chain attack where you have a company or you have cyber criminals attacking a particular company, but by going through a third party company that, that, that has access to the actual target. The best example of this would be the cyber attack against Target back in the year 2013. In case you've forgotten, or maybe you didn't even know this, Target is this very big uh, supermarket chain in the United States, right? There may be in other countries, I'm not entirely sure, but for sure then in the United States. Back in the year 2013, hackers were able to install malware on the card readers. Like when you go to a Target uh, supermarket, you put all the items in your cart. When you go to the checkout, you, put, you provide your debit card or your credit card, they swipe it. Those machines that read the cards, the hackers were able to plant malware on those devices and they were then able to steal the credit card details of millions. I believe there was over 40 million customers. One of the biggest cyber attacks in US history. Now, how did the hackers, how were they able to get malware on the card readers? You're not gonna believe this, but here's the truth. See, Target had business with a third party company this third party company dealt specifically with servicing of air conditioning units, AC. So in order for this company to be able to access the air conditioning units for Target remotely, they had a VPN connection established with Target. So what the hackers did was that they went through this third party company, they sent a phishing email to one of the employees, the employee ended up installing the uh, phishing uh, malware on the system, the hackers were then able to steal the username and password for the VPN connection 
And from there, they were able to log into Target's network. And from there, they were then able to gain access and spread the malware. That is the classic supply chain attack, of which, by the way, I am making a very short documentary on this attack against Target. So please be on the lookout for that one. You're going to enjoy that documentary. Let me now round up this video by talking about how supply chain attacks can be prevented. And the very first step would be through the process of accountability by auditing. So basically, let's assume you have company A, you have company B. What can happen here is that company A can send its auditors to company B to make sure that company B has a great security policy in place, there isn't anti-malware, things like that, and company B can also do the same by sending their own auditors to company A. So basically, you're, ins you're ensuring accountability through auditing, you're holding each other accountable. Fun fact, going back to the attack against Target, it turns out that this company that provided the servicing for Target's air conditioning units they had anti-malware on their systems. The problem here is they were using the free version of Malware Bytes. If you don't know, Malware Bytes is actually one of my favorite anti-malware products, but the free version provides only on-demand scan, nothing more. Had it been that they were using the paid version of Malware Bytes that, that provides 24-7 monitoring, it would have detected the malware. And had it been that prior to the attack, Target had sent their auditors to audit this company, they would have discovered that, hey, you guys are using the free version of Malware Bytes. What's wrong with you? Use the paid version. So auditing or accountability through the process of auditing is a great way to ensure that supply chain attacks do not occur. The second step here would be when it comes to the actual network access. So let's say company A provides network access to company B. That access will be just the access that company B actually needs and nothing more. Basically, let's assume company B needs access to company A's files for the HR department. That is all the access they are going to get. Company B will, will not get access to the files for the marketing department or for the financial department and so on. This can be achieved through different types of techniques like network segmentation, use of files, and so on. So that's basically it for today's video where I have covered supply chain attacks. And I'm actually going to be making a mini documentary on the attack against Target. It's going to be like a Netflix style kind of short documentary. I hope you'll uh, tune in for that one. I'll be uploading that documentary probably in a few days from now. So please be on the look out for that if you enjoyed today's video please do give it a thumbs up share the video with anyone who may feel my benefit from it and of course if you're new here to the channel welcome to lab cyber my name is alex i make tutorials on cybersecurity. please do subscribe hit the bell so that you're notified whenever i upload a new video stay safe out there and i'll talk to you next time cheers